been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is the Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out. And this is part 88. All the time God had living heaven on earth in his mind. This is what occurs as you decree thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The greatest supernatural merger generates the kingdoms of this world into the kingdoms of a God forever. Now, perpetually, it is absolute and without reversal. Ephesians 1.10 from the Amplified Version, the classic edition reads like this. He planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and to head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on the earth. And with that in mind, we are going to talk about the connection for God's royal kingdom. Looking in Daniel, the seventh chapter, the 15th through the 28th verses from the King James Version. This is Daniel who is receiving divine revelations through visions he's seen, but he didn't understand them. So it was told to him that there were great beasts, even four of them, and they were actually kings, that would rise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and even ever and ever. And so there would arise this fourth beast and what would happen with his style, he was so fierce that he crushed and ate what he killed. He broke in the pieces and stamped what was ever left. And that looks like he was fearsome and nobody could beat him. But it says this, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. And this is what the enemy was doing, speaking great words that were bigger and boastful and making him seem like he could be ruling and reigning. But it said that he couldn't do it because the judgment was set for us and against him. But this is the enemy's style. It says in verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high God. And that means that he's lying on God and he shall wear out the saints of the most high, which means that there would be battle fatigue and he would try to think to change the times in the laws. But you have to understand that there is a set time for laws. There are set time for eternity and it never ends. And he says he tried to split up the time and to break up your day, which would leave you hopeless. But it says, but the judgment shall sit 
and they, that's us, the saints of the most high God, that is the body of Christ, that is the bride of Christ, that is the war bride, shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. And then verse 27 says, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. And that is God. When we look at the favor that we have and actually what is the set time? In Psalm 102, the 13th verse from the King James Version says, Thou shalt arise, speaking of God, and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is come. Now set your faith on that, that the set time is forever. The set time is is now the set time is perpetual now let's look at this in terms of fighting battle fatigue in isaiah 40 the 26 through the 31st verses says lift up your eyes on high and behold who have created these things that bringeth out their host by number he calleth them all by name by the greatness of his might for he is strong and power and not one faileth. And then he says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And in them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. And it would be even the trained warriors. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Now that weight in Hebrew says that we are binding together as one. So we are not just in unity with God or in harmony with him, but we are one where you can't see any difference. Also, when we look in Psalm 27, the 13th verse says, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So it says that we have to have the vision of what God wants us to see so that we won't quickly faint. And then also in Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So take those words to heart and believe that. This also, when we look at this from Psalm 9, it says this, For thou, O Lord, hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou settest in the throne judging right. And then it says in verse six, O thou enemy, destructions have come to a perpetual end. Thou have destroyed cities and the memorial passed away. But you have to understand, but God endureth forever and his judgment is righteous and right. What would we like to leave for you today in terms of a message? Move from battle fatigue shouting the battle cry for the kingdom of God. Declare the end from the beginning. Revelations, the 11th chapter, the 15th verse from the complete English version says, now the kingdom of this world belongs to 
our Lord and to his chosen one, and he will rule forever and ever. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program is the Tsunami Blessing Inside and Out. Now move from battle fatigue, shouting the battle cry for the kingdom of God. Declare the end from the beginning. Now the kingdom of this world belongs to our Lord and to his chosen one. And he will reign forever and ever. Now we are going to talk about the coronation of heaven's royal kingdom. And that begins with Psalm 110 from the King James Version. And it says, the Lord, which is God, says unto my Lord, which is Jesus Christ, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Now this first portion shows that God is talking to Jesus and King David is having a vision of what's going on, but he's talking about Jesus being the king. And what he says here is, you are the conqueror. There's no one higher than your name. And what he's saying to us as Jesus people, we will participate in the battle. Now, when we look at verses four through seven, we could see Jesus as the priest, the high priest. And it says, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He will judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He will wound the heads over many countries. He will drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. And when we're thinking about this, we're looking at now we could see Jesus as the head of the body of Christ triumphantly. So the body of Christ is not moving around like a headless church, but we indeed have and recognize Jesus as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the King Priest from the order of the kingdom of God which is not a natural order, it's a supernatural order. Let's also look in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the 10th through the 20th verses from the King James Version said, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shewed toward his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, 
but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, because he is the highest. He swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. What it shows here is that we are going to war from a place of victory. Just meditate on that. When God made an oath for the promise he had for us, it ended all strife. So every war that we ever experienced, he already ended all the strife. So we're going from a place of victory and not trying to get the battle won for us. We have a winning position. And then it says, we're in God willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise, that's us, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. That hope we have is an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, is undisputable, which entereth into that within the veil. Wherefore the forerunner it was entered, even Jesus, made in a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So let's look also in Genesis, the 32nd chapter, beginning with the 24th verse from the King James Version. It says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, this is what the man did, touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the man said, let me go for the day breaketh. And Jacob says, I will not let you go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And Jacob said, Jacob. And the man says, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hath thy power with God and with man and hath Proval. And Jacob asked him, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou should ask after my name? And the man blessed Jacob there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I've seen the face of God and my life is preserved. Now what he did is that he called that place champion of God. For now he was a prince of God for God blessed him with that status. We have to understand this that he seemed to have to fight all his life and he was actually fighting for God's dream for God actually chose him from the womb. He had to fight for the birthright. He had to fight for the firstborn status, the double portion. He had to fight everywhere he went and he felt that he was in a failure to thrive. And what happened to his name, Jacob, could have polar opposite meanings. Everyone seemed to think that it means supplanter, but actually it means to watch from behind. So all these years, people are calling him, 
Oh, you're a supplanter. You're a deceiver. So what happened is getting into his subconscious mind and that had to be replaced supernaturally so that he could believe that he was a prince of God. And that may be your situation too, but you believe that God will wipe your slate clean that you are the righteous of God through Jesus Christ. You are a prince of God. You are are a princess of God. Now on our program today, you can enjoy the music of Cassandra. Now let's welcome her as she sings Christmas time. What are we remembering about the birth of Christ? That he came to change the trajectory of everything that was happening in our life. So he took us from ashes to Beauty. He's taken us from being a slave to being a king priest. I'll be right back after a song, Christmas Time. You know I love you, Christmas time. I, I, I. on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion, where the theme of our program is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Now move from battle fatigue, shouting the battle cry for the kingdom of God, declare the end from the beginning. 
Now the kingdom of this world belongs to our Lord and to his chosen one, and he will reign forever and ever. Now this section, we're going to address the combination to heaven's royal kingdom. We're going to look in Psalm 24 from the Passion Translation and it entitled The Glorious King. This is David's poetic praise to God. God claims the world as his own. Everything and everyone belongs to him. He's the one who pushed back oceans to let the dry ground appear, planting firm foundations for the earth. Who then ascends into the presence of the Lord and who has a privilege of entering into God's holy place? Those who are clean, whose works and ways are pure, whose hearts are true and sealed by the truth. Those who never deceive, whose words are sure, they will receive the Lord's blessing and righteousness given by the Savior God. They shall stand before God, for they seek the pleasure of God's face the God of Jacob. So they're remembering when Jacob said he saw God face to face. In this particular passage of scripture, when it tells you to pause in his presence to think about this, it's because this would be the role that we would have as a priest. Now let's continue the same scripture because it shows us our role as the king. It says, so wake up. You living gateways, lift up your heads, you ageless doors of destiny. Welcome the king of glory, for he is about to come through you. You ask, who is this glory king? The Lord, armed and ready for battle, the mighty one, invincible in every way. So wake up, you living gateways, and rejoice, fling wide, you Ageless doors of destiny, here he comes. The king of glory is ready to come in. You ask, who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of victory, armed and ready for battle. The mighty one, the invincible commander of heaven's host. Yes, he is the king of glory. What it, this is showing, this is the king in us who has the war cry. Now let's look at Psalm 24, 6 through 8, first from the Wycliffe Bible and then from the voice translation. It says, this is a generation of men seeking him, of men seeking the face of God of Jacob, ye princes. Take up your gates, ye everlasting gates. Be ye raised, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Now let's read it from the voice translation. It said, these are the people who chase after God. Like Jacob, they look for the face of God. Pause. City gates open wide. Ancient doors stand back. For the glorious king shall soon pass your way. Who is the glorious king? The eternal who is powerful and mightily equipped for battle. Now let's look at the position that we need to take. Jesus gives us what we should be doing in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the eighth verse says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. We'll see him exactly how he is because there will be no obscurity. Let's also look at Isaiah 33, the 17th chapter from the King James Version says, Thine eye shall see the king in his beauty. This is the king of kings. And thy eyes shall behold the land that is very far off, which is the kingdom of God. But Jesus says the kingdom of God is within us. And then also let's look in Proverbs 21. The first verse says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it to wherever he will. 
So when our heart is in the hands of the Lord, what he does is he cleanses our heart and removes the contaminations so that we can have a pure relationship with him. So then what happens then, what is our desire? Our desire can be found in Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, 11th verse. And it says, he that loveth pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. So then we're going to protect and guard our heart because we love the pureness of heart because that is what shows what we believe and whom we believe. And then it says because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, then it's going to be the grace of our lips because our heart is perfect and pure before God. And it says it creates intimacy with God. Now let's look at this. In Jeremiah, the second chapter, the 12th through the 14th verses from the Living Bible shows us what we to take heed and make sure that we correct anything in that area. It says, the heavens are shocked at such a thing and shrink back in a whirl and dismay. For my people have done two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they have built for themselves broken cisterns that can't hold water. So what happens here is that when we are broken and broken hearted, we can't hold anything. And it's possible that someone can forsake God because they think he did it to them. But this is what it says. Why has Israel become a nation of slaves when you are destined to be a king? Why is she captured and led away, led far away when you are supposed to come out of prison to reign? We have to know this is in the heart of God for us to be right and perfect. And that's what Jesus' blood paid for. Every transgression, every iniquity, he redeemed our life from destruction. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there, basking in the sun, and all of a sudden, I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing. Not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now move from battle fatigue, shouting the battle cry for the kingdom of God. Declare the end from the beginning. Now the kingdom of this world belongs to our Lord and to his chosen one, and he will reign forever and ever. Now we are going to look at this section as the celebration of a heaven's royal kingdom. Beginning with Psalm 45 from the voice translation, it reads, my heart is bursting with a new song. Lyrics to my king erupt like a spring for my king to my king. And my tongue is a pen of a poet, ready and willing. Better by far are you than all others, my king. Gracious words flow from your lips indeed. God has blessed you forever. With your sword at your side, you are glorious, majestic, a mighty warrior. Right on in splendor, Ride into battle victorious for the sake of truth, humility, and justice. Perform awesome acts trained by your powerful right hand. Laser sharp arrows leap from your bow to pierce the heart 
of the king's foe. They lie defeated before you. O oh God, your throne is eternal. You will rule your kingdom with a scepter of justice. You have loved what is right and hated what is evil. That is why God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness and lifted you above your companions. Can you see that's the king in Jesus? Now let's continue. All of your clothing is dripped in the scent, in the rich scent of myrrh, aloes, and cassia, in palaces decked out with ivory. Beautiful stringed instruments play for your pleasure. At your royal wedding with the daughters of kings, among the guests of honor, your bride queen stands at your side, adorned in gold from Ophir. Now this is Jesus being consummated with the bride of Christ. But not only that, she is the war bride. Let's listen to the instruction she's given. Hear this, my daughter. Pay close attention to what I am about to say. You must forget your people and even your father's house because the king yearns for your beauty. Humble yourself before him, for he now is your Lord. The daughter of Tar arise with a gift. The wealthy will bow and plead for your favor. A stunning bride, the king's daughter waits within. Her clothing is skillfully woven with gold. She, in her richly embroidered gown, is carried to the king. Her virgin companions following close behind. They walk in the spirit of celebration and gratefulness and delight. They enter the palace of the king. O king, in this place where your ancestors reigned, you will have sons and you'll make them princes throughout all the land. Now make sure your name is remembered by all future generations so that the people will offer you thanks and praise now and forever. Let's look in Psalm 22, the 30th and 31st verses from the Passion Translation because it shows the king's son, Jesus' sons and Jesus' daughters, Jesus' future seed. And it says, his spiritual seed shall serve him. Future generations will hear from us about the wonders of the sovereign Lord. His generation yet to be born will glorify him and they will all declare it is finished. So what we're saying now is the works of God are finished. What is showing that even though Jesus had no natural seed, he has the supernatural seed, which is a spiritual birthing of the church. And then when we consummate it with Jesus, then we give birth to what he desires to. But we have to be able to come alive. Again on our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Cassandra. Now let's welcome her as she sings, Come Alive, for certainly when Jesus is in our heart, we have eternal life, we have resurrection life, and we have abundant life to the full, till it overflows. Let's hear her. Come alive. One and only.
Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Now move from battle fatigue, shouting the battle cry for the kingdom of God. Declare the end from the beginning. Now the kingdom of this world belongs to our Lord and to his chosen one. And he will rule forever and ever. Now this section we're going to be dealing with the crystallization from the heavens of royal kingdom. We're going to look in the first chapter of Luke, the 26th through the 38th verses from the Amplified Version, the classic edition, and it reads, Now in the sixth month after that, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a girl never having been married, any virgin espoused to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Let's look at that. Whether we are virgins or not this day, God makes us a virgin through Jesus' blood. So now we're a secondary virgin. So then our womb will be pure to carry God's dream. And it goes on to say, And he said unto her, Hail, O favored one, endued with grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed, favored of God are you before all other women. Now why don't you say, I am God's favorite. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled and disturbed and confused at what he said and kept revolving in her mind what such a greeting might mean. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace, free, spontaneous, absolute favor, and loving kindness with God. And listen, you will become pregnant and you will give birth to a son and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, eminent, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his forefather David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages. And of his reign, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, 
How can this be since I have no intimacy with any man as a husband? She was not questioning that it would happen. She just wanted to know how she should be in position to receive it. Then the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you like a shining cloud so that the holy, pure, sinless thing, offspring, which shall be born of you will be called the Son of God. And for us, that will be the offspring of Jesus. And listen, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is now the sixth month with her who are called barren. For with God, nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. We have to be able to believe that it might be impossible to man, but it is not impossible to God. And this is what Mary said then. Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it done to me according to what you have said. And the angel left her. What the angel gave her was not just a logos word, but it was a rhema word. It was a poured forth word from God into her womb that impregnated her. Now let's look at Mary's war cry. And this is from the passage translation, Luke, the first chapter, the 46 through the 56 verses. This is Mary's prophetic song. And Mary sang this song. My soul is ecstatic, overflowing with praises to God. My spirit bursts with joy over my life giving God. For he set his tender gaze upon me, his lowly servant girl. And from now on, everyone will know that I have been favored and blessed. The mighty one has worked a mighty miracle for me. Holy is his name. Mercy kisses all his godly lovers from one generation to the next. Mighty power flows from him to scatter all those who walk in pride. Powerful princes he tears from their thrones and he lifts up the lowly to take their place. Those who hunger for him will always be filled. But the smug and the self-satisfied, he will send away empty because he can never forget to show mercy. He has helped his chosen servant, Israel, keeping his promises to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And then it says before going home, Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, which gave her time to be able to carry Jesus and receive him totally in her womb because she was shown when she went back home. Let's see what the scriptures say in terms of foretelling Jesus' birth. In Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse from the Amplified Version, the classic edition says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. So when we are born again, that is God with us us as well. Let's also look in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the second through the seventh verses from the Amplified Version, the classic diction, so you can see what is the whole meaning behind Jesus' birth. And also you'll be able to see our assignment as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ, as the war bride. And it says, the people who walked in darkness has seen a great light. 
those who dwell in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you like the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil of battle. For the yoke of Israel's burden and the staff or rod for gording their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as in the day of Gideon with Midian. That means that oppression cannot execute and exercise dominion against you anymore. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. And it goes on to say, for every tramping warrior's war boots and all his armor in the battle turmoil and every garment rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder well who has the shoulder it's the body of christ it's the bride of christ it's the war bride and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. You could see Mary's story and how God worked with her. God can work with us the same way that we can have heaven's offspring in the earth even now. But you have to be able to be in position to do that. And you may ask, well, how do I do that? Just receive Jesus Christ into your heart and let him be the Lord and Savior of your life. Why don't you say this prayer after me? So, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that I need a Savior and I know that there is no higher name than Jesus, no higher sacrifice than the blood of Jesus. So I ask you to forgive me of every transgression and every iniquity and apply your blood to that so I could be acceptable in your sight. Come into my heart. Be the Lord. Be the Savior of my life. And now recognize that I am the newest creation in the body of Christ known as the bride of Christ, your war bride. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now, let's return to the remaining portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now move from battle fatigue, shouting the battle cry for the kingdom of God. Declare the end from the beginning. Now the kingdom of this world belongs to our Lord and to his chosen one, and he will rule forever and ever. Now in this section, we are going to deal with the culmination of a heaven's royal kingdom, beginning with Psalm 68, the 11th through the 13th verses, 
from the Amplified Version, the classic edition, it reads, the Lord gives the word of power. The women who bear and publish the news are great hosts. Now we want to believe here that the women that they're speaking of is non-gender specific because we are looking at not only the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, but the war bride. Listen to this. The kings of the enemy's armies, they flee, they flee. She who tarries at home divides the spoil left behind. Though you the slackers may lay among the sheepfolds in slothful ease, yet for Israel the wings of a dove are covered with silver, its pinions excessively green with gold are trophies taken from the enemy. Now let's read the same selection from the Passion Translation. It reads, God Almighty declares the word of the gospel with power and the warring women of Zion deliver its message. The conquering legions have themselves been conquered. Look at them flee now. Now Zion's women are left to gather the spoils. When you sleep between sharpened stakes, I see you sparkling like silver and glistening like gold covered by the beautiful wings of a dove. Now this is showing here our co-crucifixion with Christ because that's how we get the spoils of war. Now let's look in Proverbs, the 12th chapter, the fourth verse from the King James Version, and it reads, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Now that virtuous woman, remember, is a mighty woman, a strong woman, a powerful woman, a wealthy woman, one with substance, one that is valiant, one is virtuous, one that is worthy. And it says she's a crown to her husband. And in the Hebrew, crown means to circle him for protection with her force, her army, her mean resources. She is using everything she has to help her husband. Now let's also look at the same verse from the Passion Translation that reads, the integrity and strength of a virtuous wife transforms her husband into an honored king. But the wife who disgraces her husband weakens the strength of his identity. We want to make sure that we're working side by side with Jesus and where that no one could see any difference between us and him. Let's also look in Song of Solomon, the eighth chapter, the eighth through the 10th verses from the Amplified Version, the classic edition, it reads, Gather with her family and the wedding guests in her mother's cottage. The bride said to her stepbrothers, When I was a little girl, you said, We have a little sister and she has no breast. What shall we do for our sister on the day when she is spoken for in marriage? If she is a wall discreet and Womanly will build upon her a tarot, a dowry of silver. But if she is a door, bold and flirtatious, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. She says, well, I am a wall with battlements and my breasts are like towers of it. Then was I in the king's eyes as one to be respected and to be allowed to find peace. Why wow, you can see the purity of her heart. So if anyone is trying to say anything against you in terms of degrading who God has made you, and that's a good verse to use that he made you fearfully and wonderfully. And you are a crown of glory in his hand. You are a royal diadem in his hand. Let's look in in Micah the fourth chapter, the twelfth and the thirteenth verses from the message translation reads like this. But for now on, 
they ganged up against you. Many godless people saying, kick her while she's down, violate her. We want to see Zion gravel in the dirt. These blasphemers have no idea what God is thinking and doing in this. They don't know that this is the making of God's people, that they are wheat being thrust, gold being refined. On your feet, daughter of Zion, be thrust of chaff, be refined of dross. I'm remaking you into a people invincible and to God's juggernaut to crush the godless peoples. You bring their plunder as holy offerings to God, their wealth to the master of the earth. Now let's look in Judges, the fifth chapter from the voice translation to see what happens when we need to know that God is fighting for us and he's not fighting against us. It says, then that same day, Deborah and Barak sang a song in victory. The leaders of Israel stood up and the people offered themselves willingly. Praise the eternal one. Listen, all your kings and pay attention, you rulers. I, I will sing to the eternal. I will sing praise to him, the true God of Israel. Eternal one, when you went out from Seir and marched from the field of Edom, the earth shook and the heavens poured. Yes, the clouds poured water. The mountains float like water before the eternal, the God of Sinai. They melted into a flood before the eternal one, the true God of Israel. That's a tsunami blessing. In the days of Shemgar and in the days of Jael, the main roads were empty of caravans and the travelers kept to back roads. But those from rural areas stayed away. The destitute in Israel kept far off. Until I, Deborah, rose to be a mother in Israel. They had chosen new gods. So war came to their gates. Was there a spear or shield to be found then among the 40,000 of Israel? My heart is warned by those in Israel called to command them who offered themselves willingly to the people praise eternal one sing the song those of you who now ride white donkeys and sit on rich carpets you who travel along the road all of you who hear the sound of shepherds at the watering places proclaim the just victories of the eternal the just triumph of his destitute people in israel as the people of eternal go down to the gates wake up wake up deborah wake up wake up and sing get up barak get up and carry off your captives then down went a surviving people to those who were noble and the eternal one marched to me with the mighty people with roots in Ephraim went down against the Malachites after you, O Benjamin, with your people from Makar, marched through commanders, and from Zebulun went those carrying the staff of a scribe. The chiefs of Issachar came with Deborah. Issachar was faithful to Barak, and they rushed into the valley close at his heels. And the clans of Reuben wondered in their heart. Why did you remain idle and aloof in the sheepfolds to hear whistling for the flocks? And the clans of Reuben wondered in their heart. Why did those of Gilead remain beyond the Jordan? Why did the people of Dan stay with their ships? Why did the people of Asher stay on the coast? 
settling down where they landed. But Zebulun did not fear death. And Neptili too stared down death on the heights where the battle raged. The kings came, they fought. The kings of Canaan made war. They fought at Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. But they won no spoils of silver. The stars themselves fought against them. From the heavens, the stars fought against Sisera. The raging waters of Kishan swept them away. The rushing waters, the raging waters of Kishan. March forth, my soul, march on with strength. The hoofs of the horses beat loudly. The galloping of the horses echoed. A curse on Miro, said the messengers of the eternal one. May its people be bitterly cursed because they did not come to help the eternal to stand with the eternal against the mighty foes. But Jael, the wife of Heber, most blessed of women is she, favored above all women who dwell in tents. Cicere asked for water and she gave him milk. She gave him curds in a dish fit for lords. And then she took a tent peg in her left hand and a worker's hammer in her right. And she struck Sisera. She broke and battered his head. She pierced his temple. At her feet he bowed, he fell, he dropped silent. At her feet he fell, he dropped. Where he dropped, there he lay dead. The mother of Sisera waited for him, watching through the lattice of the window. Why is his chariot so long in return, she wondered. Where are the hoofbeats of his horses? Her wisest lady in waiting have answers. In fact, she herself thinks she knows the reason. Aren't they still dividing the spoils of a successful battle? A girl or two given to every man? Spoils of beautiful dyed cloth for Sisera? Spoils of dyed cloth, beautifully embroidered? Instead of two pieces of beautiful embroidered cloth for his neck. So may all your enemies perish, O eternal one. But may those who love you be like the sun, rising and going forth with power. After this victory, the people knew peace from war for 40 years. Now let's look at that same verse Judges, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse from the 21st century King James Version. And it reads, Then he, God, made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Say that with me. The Lord made me have dominion over over the mighty, which means he restored what happened in the Garden of Eden. What message would we like for you to remember? As a crown of glory in the hand of your Lord and as a royal diadem in the hand of your God, make the dream he holds in his heart a reality. Willingly serve as a priest and as a king at his right hand, the same miraculous power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power resident in you. This means war. Always be mindful you already possess the winning position as more than a conqueror. In Ephesians, the second chapter, the fifth through the seventh verses from the passage translation reads like this. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he reunited us into the very life of Christ. 
and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Throughout the coming ages, we will be the invisible display of the infinite, limitless riches of his grace and kindness, and kindness which he showered upon us in Jesus Christ. This is Captain Dre Foster for King's Portion, where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to The King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.